My name is Malin and I've done over 5,000 minutes of meditation. Wow, we Meditation is like a very hot topic around people. You know, we all know kind of the benefits of it and that we all should kind of be doing it. And, you know, I've built this up over years. You know, this just hasn't been like, oh, I've meditated 5,000 minutes in a month or whatever. This has been like me trying to implement and me just exploring kind of what meditation is, what it can do for me. And there's all kind of different methods and different ways to do it. And we aren't really kind of taught or made aware of that. I just want to start with kind of my story. Like growing up, I was quite anxious. You know, my head and my thoughts would race at like 200 kilometers an hour. I always had fast thoughts and I would always be caught up in daydreams. You know, I'd just be thinking in class, you know, thinking about all these random weird kind of fantasies in my head. And then all of a sudden, like a teacher would be asking a question or let ask me a question or whatever. And I'd be like, oh, uh, what? And I'd just come back and I'd miss like half of the class and I wouldn't know what I was doing or where we were at. And that kind of led me to not being, not performing as good as I did in school, but I wasn't taught how to properly focus and these topics didn't capture my attention. And as I've said over the years, I've tried implementing meditation because I think it's such an important thing, especially for people like me that tend to overthink, ruminate a lot, get kind of stuck in their head and even find it hard to socialize with other people and to talk to them and just relax in the presence of others to kind of get yourself across rather than being worried about how you're gonna perform and what you should be saying. And I've always struggled to kind of make it stick. And I'm going to give you three kind of tips to, to kind of help you on what I've learned from this meditation journey. The first one is find a method that works for you. So as I said, there's lots of different meditations to try. You know, there's yoga nidra, there's just breath work, there's alternate nostril breath work, there's um, loving kindness, there's walking meditation, there's you know, all these different kind of apps and things. And you have to kind of go through a process of finding it. You know, um, Dr. K from Healthy Gamer has a lot of good kind of content if you want to see things about meditation. And from him, I kind of found that there was all these different kinds of meditations and I found one that worked for me. And what worked for me is just om chanting. It just, <laughs> it feels fun. I get focused and I relax on it. And this might have to do with my love for music and hearing sounds. But whenever I try and listen to my thoughts or do yoga nidra, my mind just kept running around, you know, it would keep going across and I'd find it very hard to, to actually focus and center myself. But with Om chanting, sometimes my mind still goes across, but I can focus on the sound and keep, um, keep very much focused. You know, it's stimulating enough for my mind and it just feels right. And I feel so much balanced after it. And with Om chanting, all you literally do is just go, Oh, you, you take deeper breaths and you do it a bit longer and you just play around with it. And I think that's kind of fun and that's worked well for me. So if you'd like to try that out, you know, maybe you should or see what works for you. The second kind of thing that I wanted to state and that I learned was that meditation is more than a habit or some sort of, you know, label. It's, it's this lifestyle of being conscious of being focused, you know, like I've noticed when I play music or sometimes when I'm cooking or when you're going to sleep, you know, that you have to be kind of focused and it kind of draws your attention in, you know, with music, it draws your attention in and you become very focused and very present. You become in the zone. And, you know, even when speaking to people, you know, you want to relax and this is the zone that you want to get into. And, even with reading, you know, reading is practicing meditation. All these kind of things are ways that you can practice meditation in your life rather than just meditating and then living your life kind of unconscious. You know, we want to bring meditation into our lives and kind of focus on these things because meditation is not just a habit that you do. It's about becoming more focused. It's about being more relaxed and more aware of yourself and your surroundings. And, you know, accepting that our minds are going to run around all the time and that we're going to have all these emotions come up and just noticing them. You know, ultimately meditation is focus. And the third and last point that I want to make is that it takes time to kind of see the benefits. And 
as I said at the start, I was quite anxious. My thoughts would run quite fast and I would always lose lose sight of what was happening and I very I struggled very much to talk to other people and to focus on other people and to become better at socializing. But with meditation I've learned to become more a little bit more relaxed. You know, I still have these racing thoughts a lot. I still get caught in daydreams quite a bit. I still am kind of anxious. But these effects have lessened and I'm more comfortable with myself. I'm more able to deal with them. I'm more able to relax when I'm in a scenario where I have to talk to people or focus on something. And also with this kind of takes time kind of thing, you know, you want to keep at it. You, If you're just becoming frustrated with it, then just make it easier. You're trying too hard, you know. <laughs> You're trying, when it's an obsession, you know, you're missing the point of meditation. Meditation is being calm and detached, you know, when you're frustrated and trying to make it go a certain way. That's not meditation. That's you trying to force this one thing to happen. And, you know, in that sense, meditation is a good way to kind of learn about the workings of the world. You know, things don't always go exactly the way that you plan and that you want them to. And... When our op opposition is these huge corporations, you know, fueled by scientists trying to find work on the ultimate level of fizz in soda and the ultimate level of sugar, the maximum kind of pleasure point and how these video games can work so we can keep these people addicted and onto it and keep them kind of unconscious and coming back to these things out of habit and coming to these things that make us less focused, that can drain our energy and kind of suck us in. Not that these things are entirely bad, but when this is our opposition and we're kind of stuck in this and we're entrenched in avoiding our feelings and our emotions by using these things that give us, that relieve our stress, that make us feel better about ourselves and our lives, then, you know, we're avoiding all this trauma, all this emotional stuff in ourselves and we keep repeating the cycle of kind of feeling bad but doing these things that make us feel bad anyway and not fixing anything or becoming more sociable, you know, and more focused and calm and detached, which ironically could also make us better at video games and better at eating healthier and better at performing in our lives and feeling better about ourselves in our life. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.